from Crema Media in Johannesburg, this is the Real Economy Report. The first antenna for the Meerkat radio telescope array was launched at the end of March. Keith Campbell reports. This dish antenna is the first of 64 that will make up Meerkat, which is a precursor to the International Square Kilometre Array, or SKA radio telescope. Categorized as an offset Gregorian design, the dish has a diameter of 13.5 meters and the antenna has a total height of 19.5 meters and weighs 42 tons. At the same event, the Karoo Array Processor Building was also officially opened. Science and Technology Minister Derek Hanacom explains the Meerkat project. We decided to put Africa not only on the map in innovative science, but in the lead for the common benefit of the scientific community and ultimately of humanity. And we are doing it. This first Meerkat antenna is the living evidence we were waiting for. We have come here today to share this moment, partly to celebrate our achievements thus far, but more so to recommit ourselves to the long road ahead. For Meerkat, it is one antenna down, 63 to go. But as we all know, as powerful as it will be in its own right, the significance of Meerkat is also in the contribution it will make to helping us learn how best to implement the Square Kilometre Array. The Meerkat will in due course form part of the first phase of the SKA, which will, will enable it to do even greater science than it would be able to do on its own. There are many ways of doing science, but more and more frontier science today involves huge international investments of time and money. Meerkat is in this category, and the SKA even more so. But prior to, and underpinning the financial investment, is an ambitious and daring dream, which will require the mobilization of minds and intense teamwork what holds it all together is a steadfastness of purpose, which ultimately must be a collective one. The contribution that Meerkat promises to make to our understanding of the universe is vast. Another important dimension of this process is the boldness and risk involved. Like all very innovative and cutting edge science and technology projects, the Meerkat itself has posed technical challenges which could only be resolved while the project was in effect already underway. Resolving these challenges and developing innovative ways of doing things is part of the contribution these ventures make. It is a calculated risk, but it is nonetheless audacious, driven by our deep curiosity and desire to know. SKA South Africa Director Dr. Bernie Fanaroff highlighted the role of industry in the Meerkat program. I want to thank our industry partners. A lot of them are here today. Uh, we've already thanked uh, Stratosat and GDSatcom. Thank you again, uh, our infrastructure partners, uh, people who are building and designing our receivers. They've been invaluable partners. We value their uh, work with us. We are very strict to them, we hold them to timelines, we squeeze them as hard as we can, and we appreciate their cooperation. I'm Dr. Glenn Collins, I'm the program manager with General Dynamics and Stratoset Datacom, uh, building the Meerkat radio telescope antenna, the part that you might see here behind me. Uh, these antennas uh, take about four months to build and fabricate, and will take 18 months to about two years to build all 64 of them here out in the Karoo. Uh, one of the exciting things about this project is this is a South African funded and a South African fabricated project. Expertise from the United States and from Germany has been brought in to design these antennas, but we're bringing that expertise here so that this precision scientific instrument, as large as it is, is being fabricated here in South Africa, bringing more technology into the country, bringing more jobs to the Karoo and to this area, as well as to the scientific community here in South Africa. So it's a multinational effort that is actually bringing a lot of capabilities to a very multinational country of South Africa, and that's really exciting. 
Other news making headlines this week, the IDC turns its focus to the creation of black industrialists. The Gauteng Provincial Government launches the Go Gauteng app and the Mokhla King Enterprise Hub is launched to revitalize the township's economy. South African Development Finance Institution, the Industrial Development Corporation, reports that it approved funding of more than 128 billion rand over the past 20 years, a period that coincided with the country's democratic era. It is well and good to do just ownership change, but one could at the same time ensure that the economy or it is the companies that you fund actually grow in themselves. So what you do is, whilst you're doing the ownership change, why don't you expand the capacities of those companies? Which is why we looked at the expansionary BEE. And now what we're doing is now we're looking at black industrialists. So over that period, about 48 billion reds was approved to fund black empowerment. The Gauteng Provincial Government recently launched the Go Gauteng mobile application aimed at assisting commuters in planning their journeys, an alternative route app to provide road users with the resources needed to avoid e-toll roads, and also released the Promoting Sustainable Green Transport in Gauteng draft policy for public comment. We are here to launch the alternative routes as well. And, and then very, very importantly is for us to launch the sustainable green transport policy uh, in Gauteng. It is a draft policy document. We are releasing it for public comment today because we think it's critical for the future of our province to get sustainable transport, to look at the environmental issues, the impact of transport on the environment, mm -hmm. and the negative impact, in fact, pollution, the materials that we use to construct our roads, etc. What's the impact of that on the environment? The Gauteng Provincial Government recently launched the Mokhla King Enterprise Hub in the township of Mokhla King near Ranfontein in Gauteng. The Gauteng Provincial Government uh, has found it quite necessary to promote local economies through promotion of entrepreneurship, bringing in uh, facilities of this particular nature closer to where people take their own initiatives. What we are doing is to release the potential that exists in our townships, provide the necessary infrastructure and the resources, invest money, and most importantly, uh, help those who are trying to do things on their own, to do them in a professional way so that they themselves can become entrepreneurs. Because entrepreneurship is the way to go for job creation, for skills skills development, for the transfer of skills and for an inclusive growth. That's Crema Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.